Hello and welcome to your post-practical lecture for experiment four, which was on the freezing point diagram for our binary alloy system of tin and lead, as well as for to determine this for our Yomama Electronics Company in Durban. So our report that we require from you is going to be a full scientific report. So throughout CMY282, you've now learned how to write um, each section of the report. So we'll quickly cover again um, what you need to put in these reports. And I'll give you some hints and ideas of what to put in every section of the report. But in essence, you should have a good idea and understanding of what needs to be in every section listed here. So you need to have a title, an abstract, an introduction, a method section, a results discussion. Remember to answer the discussion questions as well as some references. So let's quickly cover what each of these sections needs to have again. Um, remember in your title, always remember to keep it less than 15 words. Remember to keep it to the point, informative. Don't just copy from the practical manual. And always remember to re convey the relevant information, like to having a formal summary to someone. If someone asks you what you did, how to summarize it in a sentence in a very formal way. That's the best way to come up with the title. Um, yeah. Then in the abstract, remember to keep it to about two to three paragraphs um, and always have your introductory sentence to the field. So um, the field of binary alloys or, you know, with, uh, with the idea of our solder system or whatever you have um, in place. Remember, write the abstract with the idea of who we're writing it for. So the people who are going to read this is Yo Mama Electronics. Um, so write it with that in mind. Um, also include a short summary of the problem. So what is going to be um, addressed. So this, of course, links to this. So what is the field? What's the problem in this field we're going to address? Um, summarize what we then found exactly, the solution sort of to the problem, and then a few sentences in which you can comment on your shortcomings or future work that you might want to um, make or improvements you want to make to the experiment that you've done. Um, perhaps, you know, think a bit wider than just what we did with lead and tin. Um, you know, that we get ternary and quaternary and pentary and hexary and you know, probably heptary mixtures and you know think about other binary other types of alloys you know that's that's kind of the idea and i mean think about lead and tin lead and tin is terrible things to work with anyway so i've given you some some good ideas so use these as a guide to remember to write your abstract and keep it to two to three paragraphs And of course, your introduction section, always about a page. Um, this is why we did the experiments. And now write your story about uh, Yo Mama Electronics, what their problem was, the theory and the background. So in other words, the background to the problem and the theory that we're going to need to use. So sort of give it a purpose, give our experiments a purpose. And here we, you know, no, 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 something about they've burned electronic boards. Um, background information, has anybody done this before? Try to find some references. You can use Reaxis. Um, it might not be the easiest thing for you to use at the moment. So there's not a specific mark allocation to these things. Remember, we always give an impressionist mark for these kind of things. So these are just ideas of how to write it. You don't have to have something like this and, and this and this and this. The ideas, these are some concepts that to help you think and help guide you to write these sections. These aren't specific things we're looking for. So. And this is idea. So just go and see if you can find something. If you can't find something, just, that's perfectly fine to say that we are the first. We aren't, but um, you can you can even Google um, for that part. I know Reaxis won't be the easiest thing to use um, at, at this stage, mostly because you probably will struggle with the terminology. Um, then remember, cover the hypothesis. What do we expect? Um, you know, what will be given? What do we expect to give these people? Um, here's an example, but you need to, of course, write your own, as always. And then, why was this hypothesis reasonable? 
So explain why the theory or what's the theory behind aesthetic mixtures and, you know, from your textbook or your notes and why is it sort of, you know, I wouldn't say common sense, but, you know, why does it sort of become common sense um, at a some stage? Why does science become common sense? Why is the theory so, so sort of, yeah, that is exactly how it works, you know, it becomes superfluous to discuss even or even to doubt in certain things like the mole fraction of something or the value of the electronegativity or the concept of electronegativity. Why don't we doubt those things anymore? Um, that's sort of the idea of why the hypothesis is reasonable. So that's your introduction section. Mainly focus on these parts. Um, I think that's the most important part. The why we did it. You know, the Yo Mama writes a nice story for me there. Then your method section. So remember, the point of your method section is also that people can repeat the work so themselves to see if the data you collected is correct. Um, and you can make some drawings, you know, like my drawings. Please don't just screenshot things, but make your own drawings. Um, you can do them by hand, and of course, they will always be rewarded. I always tell my markers to reward additional effort as far as possible. Um, you can explain the experimental setup in a in a paragraph as detailed as far as possible. But like I say, a paragraph. Don't go on for 20 pages on the experimental setup. I know you can, but keep to a paragraph. Um, and explain how we made the different mixtures, the different compositions, and tell a story. No lists. Nobody wants to read 15 bulleted lists. You want to follow a bulleted list in the lab, but you want to read the story, and then you need to make your own lists from there. So like I say, blah, 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 blah. I want to fall asleep when reading these pages. Okay, the results section, I say here, as long as you need it to be, as long as you need to make it, as long as you need to make your point covered and whatever you need to show me, as many graphs, as many, whatever you want to show us. So you're gonna present your results, right? Plot the different cooling curves, so using Excel, um, and like I said, you can make them all on one graph as far as possible. Um, if you feel that they overlap too much or, you know, whatever, then you can put them on different ones. You can have one big figure with all of them on it. I don't mind. You can, that's a personal choice, but just make them beautiful. Of course, you tabulate your freezing and your aesthetic temperatures against your different mole fractions. And then you plot your phase diagram. And this is our showpiece. In other words, it needs to be grand, it needs to be beautiful, it needs to be big. Don't make it like a whole page, I'm not meaning to be excessive and be dramatic, but um, you know, it needs to build up to that. And of course, always explain everything that you do, but specifically the phase diagram needs to have a few sentences. Don't just give it there. You need to explain to these people you found their answer to the question. Don't just always, don't just give a graph and then there's no explanation. People don't understand things that you mean you just give it to them. Um, always essentially give it to explain something that you put there, like you would a lecture, like you would me want, want me to lecture you on it. Yeah. So if you put something there, think about someone who has not seen it before. How would you teach them to understand what you've put there? That's a good way always to write anything that you have. Because otherwise, I mean, what, what's the point of putting it there? Then you can might as well just leave it out. You just might as well just not do anything. Okay, so that's your results section. Then your discussion section. Remember, broadly discuss your results. So as I broadly discuss, try to go from how we identify the problem, how we theorize to solve the problem, then to how we actually solve the problem. And how we, how our data then, you know, so how, actually how we collect the data and then how we solve the problem through our data. And then how does our data support the hypothesis? In other words, those last two things, how does that connect? Do we have any weird data that, that any one of our examples have something weird or something, I say weird, please never use the word weird in your reports. That is not a scientific word. I use the word weird here for your benefit, for the benefit of laughing, for the benefit of comedy, um, I use, just never use the word weird ever again. Um, essentially, it doesn't make sense. 
is there the more scientific word for weird is probably something like is there any um, outliers is there any um, differences in the data you know something like that is more formally stated um, also if there's anyone who has recorded one of them compare results to theirs um, try and find someone who's recorded a late turn google it reaccess it try to find one look it up in a textbook there's actually books on binary alloys um, you can find a book you can look it up and you can literally look up the freezing point diagram all binary alloys have prop as has been made engineers can actually look these things up it's probably unlikely like they'll ever actually ever come to a chemist and contact us but you know just for let's just try to make the course enjoyable or digestible or whatever um anyway and of course then does your your diagram agree with theirs does it not why can you think of a reason why it might not and we improve our experiment this gives you things to write on in other sections of the report again Um, finally, just for your, your discussion questions, um, what is the aesthetic temperature and the composition of this binary alloy? Use your phase diagram and look where the E is and just read off the two variables. I'm just asking it directly here. You'll probably state it somewhere in your report, but it is just a direct place where we want you to state it. Um, also, you can draw a, draw a rough phase diagram for a binary system and indicate what phases exist where where they are in equilibrium how many degrees of freedom exist on each equilibrium line remember the equilibrium lines are those physical lines that you have so those lines that go like this so what happens if you're on that line um, how many degrees of freedom are there um, uh, you can actually use your actual diagram just delete all the numbers from it and just have a general diagram so that's why i say you can draw it by hand or you can use your actual diagram but it needs to be a general diagram. So there's no numbers on a general diagram. It's always just temp temperature versus composition. Um, there's a bunch of examples in, in Atkins. So like I say, just keep it general. And then explain the terms alloy, eutectic temperature, and solid solution. You need to have some textbook references for this. Um, there's a lot of textbooks out there that you can use. There's a lot of textbooks in the, in the library um, you can also use, not just Wikipedia. And reaxis won't help you with that. You're not going to look up the word alloy or eutectic temperature or eutectic. I really need to focus on, I say that word, eutectic temperature and solid solution um, on these. But you will look them up in a textbook. I know you're hardworking students, each and every one of you, and you will look them up. All right, and then as always, Please use the Royal Society of Chemistry citation style. Remember, there's examples in the guide of how to do them by hand, or you can use Mendeley. Hopefully you are quite waxed in terms of using those. And then you can always use reactors in the library to good, find your good quality scientific literature or your reports. Okay, so yeah, good luck. Remember, you can always email questions, uh, whatever you'd like to ask and come to your, and, and of course, Whatever you would like to put in your report, you can put in your report. This is your report. The scientific freedom you have is, is endless. Um, you don't have to ask permission to include anything. You can include anything you want. If you want to include a diagram, include a diagram. If you want to include an extra paragraph on something, include an extra paragraph on it. That is the idea behind it. We want you to think, we want you to learn, we want you to express yourself as a scientist. We want you to discover your scientific method. You know, each of us are different, and that is why science is so exciting. Okay, so good luck, and thank you for watching.